Initially, we are introduced to an elderly man named Hori who lives in solitude, having lost his wife many years ago and his cherished dog recently ran away. This loss has left Hori feeling purposeless, with no one to share his thoughts and experiences. He spends most of his days immersed in photographs of his late wife, reminiscing about the beautiful moments they shared. However, one fateful morning, he awakens with a bold decision in mind. Hori takes a daring step by purchasing a dating magazine and selecting a lovely young woman named Leslie. His ultimate goal is to win her heart and make her his wife. Even though, given his age and wrinkles, seducing her seems like an almost impossible challenge. To overcome this, Hori contemplates an audacious transformation. He seeks to make himself appear young and handsome. Ordinarily, people resort to medical procedures or rigorous training regimens to achieve a youthful appearance. But Hori, driven by impatience and constrained by financial limitations that prevent him from visiting a doctor, embarks on his transformation journey using objects readily available in his own home. To begin, he uses a small hacksaw blade to trim away old flesh from his feet, surprisingly feeling more ticklish than painful throughout the process. Next, Hori fills his ears with molten wax, subsequently removing them once solidified, causing his ears to bleed. Following this, he coats his teeth with correction fluid and applies powder to his face. In an eerie move, he plucks eyeballs from a creepy-looking doll and fits them into his eye sockets. To deal with his wrinkled skin, Hori conceives a clever plan. He stretches it and secures it behind his neck with safety pins. Hori continues his transformation using a combination of scissors, spray paint, blow dryers, medical pills, and even hammers to attain a more youthful appearance. A wig tops off his new look, and he administers a high-voltage current to revitalize his lost energy. Upon completing this radical transformation, Hori emerges as an entirely different man, exuding a dashing charm and a captivating smile that is sure to catch the attention of women. In the subsequent scene, Hori sets off to meet the love of his life with a small gift in hand, confident that he can win Leslie's heart. As expected, he succeeds in capturing her affection. The two embark on romantic adventures, sharing ice cream, strolling along the beach, attending a party, and watching the sunset together. The only obstacle in their path is Leslie's diminutive dog, Bacon, who appears to harbor a deep dislike for Hori, persistently barking as if sensing the deception. Despite this, Hori continues to court Leslie, going the extra mile by gifting her his vintage Riley car. They set out on a romantic ride that seems to be straight out of a fairy tale, complete with birds and the fragrance of flowers enveloping them. However, their blissful outing takes a dire turn when the car encounters potholes, leaving Hori's frail body in a precarious state. Amid this predicament, Leslie sneezes, and her face gets stuck on the windshield. Shockingly, it is revealed that she too is an elderly woman who underwent a drastic transformation to appear youthful. Hori is left astounded by the sight, and moments later his own body reverts to its original form. Initially, the two are dumbfounded by the revelation, but soon become ecstatic and engage in a passionate embrace. The movie concludes with Bacon the dog revealing his true elderly appearance, dispelling any illusions of youth. The narrative then transitions to the second movie, set in a somber and ominous atmosphere. Three children, including a bully named Peter and his reluctant companions, Michael and Sam, approach an abandoned house known as the Ghost Train. Peter coerces the others into joining him on this eerie journey. Upon reaching their destination, they are horrified by the house's eerie appearance. The entrance is marked by a colossal grim reaper looming overhead and severed heads hang from the ceiling. The youngest child, Sam, desperately wishes to run to the beach, but Peter refuses to let him leave. As time passes, the children notice a skull on the wall, which serves as the ticket machine with a sign reading, Pound One Per Ride. Without hesitation, Peter urges the others to contribute their money. While Sam remains apprehensive, he reluctantly surrenders his 50 pence coin. Once the collection is complete, Michael nervously approaches the skull and begins feeding it the coins. The ground shakes, and cockroaches emerge from the cracks. The imposing grim reaper begins to stir, indicating impending chaos. However, it abruptly halts, and the unsettling events cease. Frustrated by this, Peter, overcome with anger, approaches the skull and violently strikes it with a stick. 
Despite the other boys' pleas for him to stop, fearing dire consequences, Peter persists in his destructive act. Ultimately, he shatters the skull. In the following instant, Sam is unexpectedly pulled inside the house in a wagon, and before his friends can react, the door slams shut, marking the last time he is ever seen. Three decades later, Michael and Peter return to the abandoned house each year to honor their lost friend. Michael has gone on to become a prosperous businessman, while Peter's life has been marred by alcoholism, reducing him to the role of a cab driver. As Michael lays flowers in remembrance, Peter confides that he continues to be haunted by that dreadful day, plagued by guilt for luring Sam to the abandoned house when the young boy merely wanted to go to the beach. However, Michael reveals a shocking truth. He never actually inserted the final coin into the skull's mouth, admitting that fear held him back from doing so, a choice he deeply regrets. This revelation stuns Peter, but he decides to forgive his friend. Curiosity gets the better of both men, and much like before, they insist on placing the coin inside the skull, eager to uncover the truth. Upon inserting the coin, the ground trembles, and the imposing grim reaper begins to ascend. The door swings open, revealing the same wagon that vanished three decades ago. From the wagon emerges a ghastly pallid figure, none other than Sam, the boy everyone believed to be deceased. Michael and Peter, who have been watching this spectacle in sheer horror, find themselves paralyzed by shock and disbelief. Michael, unable to contain his astonishment, approaches his childhood friend Sam, attempting to initiate a conversation. Unfortunately, this proves to be an ill-fated choice. The once familiar Sam is no more. He emerges with a singular intent, revenge. In the blink of an eye, he snaps Michael's neck, rendering him unconscious. Then he turns his vengeance towards his childhood tormentor, Peter, inflicting a brutal, bloody demise that leaves the car's windshield splattered with gore. In his incapacitated state, lying on the floor, Michael reflects, What if we went to the beach instead? Moving on to the third movie, it unfolds in an Indian village where two siblings, Veer and Mira, reunite to check on their ailing father, Rajendra. Both have been living in different cities, and they come together upon receiving a message from Rajendra that he is nearing the end of his life. To their astonishment, they discover their father alive and well, preparing food in the kitchen. The siblings confront their father in frustration, demanding an explanation for his misleading message, considering their busy schedules. Rajendra reveals that he had something vital to discuss. The family convenes in the living room, indulging in small talk that gradually escalates into bickering. They hold each other responsible for their current undesirable circumstances. It is revealed that the sibling's mother lies paralyzed and mute in the adjacent room, deeply loved by her children, but no longer recognizable in her state. As the conversation progresses, hidden family secrets emerge. Veer is exposed as a gambler who has previously stolen jewelry from the house and entangled himself with dangerous drug addicts and criminals. On the other hand, Mira, the daughter, has pursued a life with her girlfriend after running away from home and is now planning to adopt a child. The siblings perceive each other as failures and are locked in conflict. When their dispute becomes violent, Rajendra intervenes by presenting a box containing childhood toys. The sight of these mementos momentarily dispels their worries, eliciting fleeting happiness. However, Rajendra delivers a startling revelation. He has sold the house and new owners will take possession the following day. The children react with fury to this news and question the decision made without their consent. Rajendra defends his choice, citing his role as the builder of the house and his right to sell it. He concludes by asking, which one of you will take care of your mother? Subsequently, as Rajendra heads to his room to prepare for his departure, the siblings engage in a more composed discussion. Veer, given his association with dangerous individuals, believes he can't provide adequate care for their mother. Mira, on the other hand, states that her impending adoption plans leave her without the time to be a caregiver. The peaceful conversation spirals into yet another argument, as neither of them is willing to take on the responsibility of caring for their ailing mother. At this moment, Rajendra reappears, unveiling another shocking revelation. He confesses to having injected their mother with a lethal poison, and within two hours, she will pass away painlessly. 
Understandably, this revelation infuriates the children, who label him a murderer and attempt to summon the police. Rajendra intervenes, explaining the arduous, heartbreaking nature of his daily life, spent feeding his wife, tending to her soiled bedsheets, and ensuring her comfort while the children remain absent. As he prepares to leave, Rajendra produces a syringe containing the antidote to the poison he administered earlier. He entrusts it to his children, stating that whoever wishes to save their mother must commit to caring for her for the remainder of her days. The movie concludes with Rajendra departing the house with his belongings, leaving the children to ponder the moral dilemma of whether they should save their ailing mother or not. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a thumbs up and consider subscribing as it greatly helps out the channel. Thank you for watching.